Let's continue our discussion of connective tissues. Now let's start here next with cartilage. When you look inside of cartilage, you're going to see lots of cells called chondrocytes. Now remember your little words here. Chondro means cartilage in Latin. And remember, sites are the cells that maintain an area. They're like the blast, they just don't build as much. And you're going to see these chondrocytes inside of a hollow space. That little hollow space is called the lacuna. You'll see the same thing when you look at bone. Now, the type of cartilage is determined by its matrix. That's all the material around and in between the cells which they're making. And you're going to see these three different cartilage types have all got different consistencies with different functions in different places. No matter where you see cartilage, it is strong. Just after bone, cartilage is your second strongest tissue, especially the hyaline cartilage we'll look at next. Some of these cartilage cells will like to produce proteins <clears throat> called proteoglycans. They trap water. That makes them a nice little cushion or shock absorber. You look in between places like the bodies, your vertebrae, or down there in your knees where you got these fibrocartilage pads where there's lots of compression and pressure. You need those little shock absorbers there. Now, cartilage is avascular. You may have seen this in some other tissues too, like epithelial. That means it doesn't have blood vessels. Also doesn't have nerves. Reason being, you often find cartilage in pressure points. You don't want to be putting pressure on nerves and blood vessels. That cause pain and a loss of blood flow. And without that blood going through this tissue, it does pass very close to it, but not through it. That's going to cause it to heal slowly. The more blood you have in a tissue, the faster it's going to heal up. And the less blood you have, the slower it will heal. And around the outside of cartilage, you'll see this dense, irregular connective tissue layer called a perichondrum. It's almost like a skin around it. If you ever saw maybe a dog uh, drag up a bone in your yard and after several days, there's what looks like a skin peels off of it. That was that perichondrum. So here's our three different types of cartilage, hyaline, fibro, and elastic. Now look at the hyaline cartilage here, very strong. This is like a very strong, dense, very smooth, glass-like type of cartilage. You often find this over the ends of bones, where bones come together and meet. You don't want bone grinding on bone. That would cause a lot of damage and pain. So what our do body does is put this very smooth, hard, hyaline cartilage over the surface. Since it's smooth and there's other materials in there to reduce friction, it's very glassy and smooth, letting all this move against each other. That way, hopefully, you don't get much damage. Given enough time, it'll slowly wear away, and that's what causes a lot of arthritis. But if you look at this histology picture, you can see these little hollow spaces called lacuna, and what's to the inside are the chondrocytes. You can see they have a big nucleus inside of them. They look almost like eyes looking right back at you. So if you think about good examples of where you find this, Look in between your ribs and sternum. Some very strong hyaline cartilage there. If you fell down your trachea, which is your windpipe, another good example of where you can find this hard, strong hyaline cartilage. And again, over the ends of bones where they come together, good example of where you find it there. Back in embryonic development, this is the cartilage that much of our skeleton later develops from. Not all of it, but a great deal. And when you look at how long bones get longer, you'll see that there is a zone, a little area of hyaline cartilage close to the end of it. And as those cartilage cells go through mitosis and divide, those closest to the end part of the bone, which is what's called the epiphysis, will change into bone. And that's how that bone keeps getting longer. You'll see that in a future chapter. Now, after the hyaline is the fibrocartilage. Now, fibrocartilage is often found in places where there's a lot of pressure and stress. These here are very good cushions or shock absorbers. If you ever felt something maybe pop down in your knee, those are some round circular fibrocartilage pads called meniscus. They're good cushions in between those bones down in your knee. Sometimes you might have felt one pop in your jaw. That's another pressure point. So those muscles or your biting are so strong there. And if you look in between the bodies of the vertebrae, what's called intervertebral disc, you've probably heard of those before. They have a very strong outer ring of fibrocartilage. It's a softer, pulpy part to the inside, but a very strong outer layer. And that's what you can see in this histology picture off to the side. Here's all your fibers. You can see they are pretty much oriented in one direction. Think of this being like a big circle all the way around something like an intervertebral disc. That's going to make a very strong outer layer. Then you have this elastic cartilage. Now this here, being filled with elastic fibers, is going to be very flexible. Now you can still see very large numbers of chondrocytes inside their lacuna hollow spaces. 
but elastic fibers always stain dark on this histology slide. So you can see there's a lot of black fibers in between all these chondrocytes. Good example of where you find this is the outer fleshy part of your ear. That's cartilage, but it's so very flexible because of all the elastic fibers that the chondrocytes are producing. Now look at some other tissues here like bone. This is the hardest, strongest, densest tissue you have in your body. You'll see three different cell types there. Osteoblast, which build bone. Osteoclasts that break it down. And then osteocytes, which maintain it. You'll see these cells producing all this material around them. One thing you'll see is this hydroxyapatite. That is the very hard, strong mineral part of the bone. It's what makes it really hard. But in addition, in there with it are collagen fibers, and that gives flexibility. You may not think about bones as being flexible. They are. If they didn't have those collagen fibers, they'd be very brittle, and they'd break a whole lot easier than what they do. So you're going to see these osteocytes inside the little lacuna spaces, just like you saw in cartilage with chondrocytes. And here's your two different types of bone. There's cancellous and spongy, same thing. And then lastly, a compact. Now looking at the cancellous or spongy bone, you're going to see all these interconnecting rods and structures called trabeculae. They're going to run in all sorts of directions. And they call this spongy bone because it kind of looks like a sponge because of all the space in between those trabeculae. But it's not soft like a sponge, very strong. But then lastly, compact bone densest and hardest, toughest tissue in your body. You're going to see all these little concentric circles. Looks like a circle inside of a circle. You'll see this central canal with a blood vessel going right through the center of it, and you're going to see all these bone cells scattered around those circles. Now look at this comparison here between compact and spongy. Compact bone is probably the easiest tissue in the body to identify. You'll see all these big circles called osteons. They look about like tree stumps right there. Right to the very center where that central canal is where you have a blood vessel. You can see there's none in one of these right here, but you do see it in others. And then all these tiny little dark dots are those osteocytes inside their little lacuna and spaces. So you'll see how these rings are laid down in a future chapter. Look at the spongy bone over here. Here are the trabeculae, all those interconnecting rods. So notice that's definitely something you don't see with the compact bone. Then we look at blood. When you look at blood, this is the only tissue in your body that flows like a fluid because it's the only tissue where the cells have a very large amount of water around them and allow that to happen. When you look at bone, there's two main components. There's the formed elements. That means the cells of the blood. And you probably heard of red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. And then there's the matrix. That's the fluid part that surrounds all those cells. Now, if you look at that plasma matrix, right, you hear about this plasma being the watery part of the blood. It's mostly water, about 91 to 92 percent. You won't see any fibers in it. You will see it allowing all these cells to move just like logs floating in a river. Whenever your heart generates pressure and moves this fluid along, the cells flow right along with it. The white blood cells can actually move on their, long, on their own, but that's another story. But look at the hemopoietic tissue here. Here's where all your blood cells are made. Again, this is what you find in your bone marrow along with adipose tissue. Now look at the two different types once again, red and yellow. Now they're basically the same, but the red has very little fat cells, adipocytes in it, where the yellow has much more. When we're young, we have a greater demand for red blood cell production. So you'll see red bone marrow inside the bones of young people. As you get older and you don't have such a big demand for production of reds, Adipose sites replace some of that region, and that's when you call it yellow bone marrow. Now look at this histology picture of blood left and right. Look at all the red blood cells. They're very numerous. You can see a scattering of some white blood cells, and you'll learn how to identify all those in the future. And over here you see more reds, more white blood cells, and these tiny fragments are platelets. Those are actually fragments of big cells called megakaryocytes found in your bone marrow. Platelets have some of the chemicals needed for clotting. Looking back at the hemopoietic tissue, remember, that's where all your blood cells are made. Every red blood cell, white blood cell, and platelet. So you find it in that marrow, again, along with adipose tissue and such. And as we said, children have more of the red. As you get older, that's going to slowly change into the yellow. And look at this right here. This is going to be yellow bone marrow. Look at all these fat cells. That's what looks like these hollow spaces, but that's fat cells there. And then there's all those developing blood cells that you see in between it. 